Okay, you guys. I'm going to show you all part of my process because I think it's really cool. So, this is almost done because Rumble is super fast. Whereas YouTube is <laughs> taking up twice as much time. Um, that's okay, though. Um, so, I watched this video, which is like over 16 minutes long, and I basically reviewed it, and I put my little description of it. This is like director's commentary, okay? So, my stuff is like, you know, pretty uh, stream of consciousness, what you see is what you get, and this is me critiquing it. And so, it's going to be really fucking long. Mm. This was a good video, though. I really liked it. It was really emotional. I like the ones where I'm emotional because it just proves to you that I'm like a human being and, you know, I'm doing this to sort of reach out to people, not to be like a star or anything. I really hate those people. I hope they die. I'm so fucking sick of this world, dude. Like, most of this world is comprised of, like, a bunch of narcissistic sacks of shit. Okay? And this is just so annoying. But anyway. Um. I don't think I've ever shown this to you before. Like, what I actually do. Um, but. Yep. This is my laptop. I know that you guys are going to be like, that's hypocritical that you have a laptop when you bitch about smartphones. Well, I don't have a smartphone. I still have, I still have this, this flip phone. You see, mental health matters, right? Mental health matters. <laughs> I like how the beginning and the end are like fading away. It's like, yeah, totally. That's like life, right? <laughs> but yes. This is my... This is my artifact, okay? But yeah, I hate smartphones. I hate what they've done to this world. And I hate all the excuses that everybody makes for that shit. I mean, I don't even like having a laptop because it's just out of responsibility. Like, why would I want a little teeny tiny laptop that I can carry around with me everywhere I go? It's a TV. It's a TV that listens to you. And it's, it's a computer, it's a casino, it's a fucking strip club. It's just, like, why would you want all that shit? Oh, the government, too. The government's always listening to you. And then they're working with all the advertisements. So, I mean, I'm not, like, a scholar on any of this shit, okay? I'm not a scholar. Like, I'm not pretending. You see this? You see this? Remember that? You don't know what the fuck that is, do you? You have no idea what that is. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? It's a telephone. It's a telephone. You want to you wanna, you wanna listen to it? Do you hear that? Do you hear that vortex? Or what do you hear? Absolutely nothing. You're like, you're probably, you probably think you're hallucinating. No, that's my job, bitch. That's my job. Anyway. <laughs> Y'all like my Grateful Dead coffee mug? That was, that was during a simpler time. That was during a way simpler time when the weed was like so much weaker than it is now. Okay? Anyway. <laughs> hey. Come here. Yeah, you know I have a cat vortex. You know. You know. You tell the vortex that you are not ashamed to be my cat. They want to shame women for having cats. Fuck that. It's a good thing to have an animal that cleans itself since we're not going to fucking do that shit, right? Now, I like cats, obviously. I like cats. I like animals, but I'm not the type of person that has to have an animal. I just like them, you know? But, I don't know. I kind of like being alone. By kind of, I mean, like, I don't know how to not be alone. Like, when I've been in relationships, I fucking hate it, dude. Absolutely hate it. And it's like, it's kind of painful. That's why I compare it to like a phantom libido. So 
much like a phantom limb, your brain will send messages. But for me, it's the libido. And then the libido's like, I don't know what you want me to do with this. And <laughs> so, so the part of my brain's still there. But it's like, it, disconnect. That's, that's what happens. And I don't feel like that's fair to do that to another person. And that's why it's like, I always prayed when I had sex because I was so paranoid that I was going to get pregnant. And I'm like, that's really bad if you're paranoid that you're going to get pregnant. The fact that pregnancy is met with such worry and terror and you know, it's not met with excitement. It's not met with joy. It's not met with like extreme gratitude and extreme... Um, I mean, I know there's always going to be that tremendous like vulnerability because it's like you're doing what you're supposed to do. But I'm sure that, like, for a woman that is excited about that, it's like she knows that that is, like, why she was created. And, like, her body is meant to push out that baby. And that's just such a beautiful thing. But it's like, if that's not what you want, if you feel like you couldn't handle that, then it, it's that sort of thing is met with such resistance and it's met with such fear and anxiety and all that shit. Um, well, if that's what you're experiencing when you have sexual intercourse, and that's something that you consistently are paranoid about, to the extent that it doesn't matter like how much protection you have, first of all, if it's supposed to be, it's going to be. So it doesn't matter how much protection you have. Like, I think that there are certain things that are just sort of set in stone. Like certain things are supposed to happen. And you can fight that. I guess it's all a test, right? It's all a test. Well, I always felt like God was testing me when I had sexual intercourse because I was constantly, like, worried. Like, so fucking worried. Um, and uh, I feel like I wasn't supposed to be pregnant. Like, if I ever got pregnant, I, I don't know. I, like, it, it's like, it's so crazy to think about. Like, you don't know what you do unless you're in the situation. I'd like to think that I wouldn't have had a kid, but I don't know. Like, I'd like to think that I could never have an abortion, but I think that that's why I was praying so hard. Um, and I feel like that that's not a good thing, you know? Like, to, to be, like, that concerned about that. But I guess that's also why I was, like, safe and more um, conscious of that. And I think it's, like, the consciousness that, you know didn't allow me to, you know, fraternize. My, my eggs, my eggs did not fraternize with that sperm. So that's good. That's really good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about, where I feel like I pray for something and like God takes care of me because I feel like, like my will is aligned with his. Like I'm not supposed to do that. And that's just, like, something that, I mean, it goes along with my mental illness. So, like, I, I just always knew, like, I was really different from everybody else and that my experience was, like, so weird and so fucked up that I was just, like, I can't do what those people do, you know? It's like there's this song by, by uh, the Talking Heads. It's called the big country and David Byrne is just complaining about the way that Americans live and how he just doesn't understand it and he never wants to be anything like it and like that's exactly how I feel and I've always felt that way since I was really young in the early 90s and so it's like it was you know that feeling you know long before technology just took over everything and the internet just ate up people's souls you know it was way before that so like I can't just blame the internet for all that. I can't just blame social media, and I can't just blame, you know, America. It's, it's like, I feel like I probably would have this sentiment in other places, too. I, it's like, I don't want to just keep shitting on the country, because it's still my country, and I still kind of want to save it, you know? Even though it probably doesn't deserve it, but... Uh, I don't know. For my Irish ancestors that I don't even know, I feel like I should try to do something positive for this world, you know? That's why I was born. Yes, to do this shit. To do this shit. And she's my little accompaniment. 
in this really weird ass life that I live, totally solitary. But hey, hey, I, mental health matters, damn it. Mental health matters. Never fucking forget it, okay? I think that people just they really underestimate like what it what it means to be a free person in society. It's like if you live in a western country, that means that you do have more freedom. But I feel like that is why it's a, an experiment. Just to kind of prove that um, people don't want that. And people will, like, willfully do things to subtract their own freedom. And not even realize that's what they're doing. Um, so. That's, uh. That's pretty heavy shit. Which is why people don't want to lift it, you know? I'm the only one that's willing. I mean, this is so light. Like, just the phone itself is so light compared to the, the phone. It's like, I see these phone cases. All these people have fancy-ass phone cases. Yeah, because you have to protect it. Right? I can throw this at the fucking wall, dude. That's what I did with my last one. Or no, not the last one, but the one before that. That was back in, like, 2017. I threw the phone against the wall, like, five times. I'm pretty sure that if you threw a smartphone at the wall, it would it would be destroyed. Just the once, you know. But yeah, I've I've since controlled my anger a little bit better than that. So, <laughs> but it's okay. I like the phone. The phone is like what I hate the most about all of my material possessions. So I can't even imagine how much I would hate my smartphone if I had one. You know what I mean? Do you ever do that where you're like, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to be somebody else entirely and, and do what they do and act the way they act. And um, I always figured that I would be an actor because, like, I'm good at empathy stuff, like really, really good. But I maybe I'm too good at it because, like, I can't imagine, like, reading lines and trying to be somebody else, like, even even for money. Like, I feel like, yeah, they're, they're really good actors out there. Um, but I guess, like, I analyze that kind of thing so much. Like, I just analyze this world and, like, how, like, it seems like we're all acting, like, we're all reading off some sort of script because we want these people to like us, and they are also reading off the script doing the exact same thing, so it's just, like, really fucked up, and, like, this is why, you know, you have kind of a suicidal perspective if you are on, like, the schizo spectrum or, like, the major depressive whatever. Like, I think about all this stuff that our ancestors went through, and it's just, like, so extreme compared to, like, this petty shit. You know, all this stuff is, like, so fucking trivial and... Um, useless, man. Compared to the, the, the things that, that, you know, people struggled with back in the day. It's just like, dude, we have to, like, make up stuff to be upset about. We have to make up stuff to, like, raise our anxiety and, you know, give us a reason to mourn. And I mean, I feel like everything is so fake now. Like, just emotions, thoughts, ideas. It's like everything's recycled, regurgitated, rehashed, garbage. So. Hmm. Now I get to pick the picture on YouTube. I used to be able to do this in Rumble, and then for whatever reason, it doesn't come up anymore. You see? to choose my own. <laughs> Let's see. Look at all these pictures of myself. It's weird because like these are just pictures that I've saved from like YouTube or the <laughs> pictures. So you have all these pictures of like sunsets because I'm obsessed with sunsets the moon or whatever the fuck is in the sky i love sunsets though oh and the beach i have a fuck ton of pictures of the beach and just random pictures that i download like <laughs> sheep and deer and dogs and 
See, that's a cool picture right there. See, I feel like these pictures are iconic and like I've always thought in pictures, which I guess is why I'm not interested in social media the way that other people are because I already think that way. Like my mind is already comprised of just a bunch of pictures. Um, and I, I think that that's why the camera is so demonic but it's, it's so powerful in that it does teach us a lot about ourselves if we look for the right things, you know? And I, I know that my, my picture is always really interesting. So I'd be fucking amazing at photography if I ever took that shit seriously. Right? Can you imagine me in a dark room? Developing photographs? I could definitely imagine that. We'll see what happens in the future, right? Let's see. I have to pick a title. It's going to be one of these. Sorry, I went off on a little tangent just now. I always do that, don't I? Man, I need to take a shower. That's right. Everybody's allowed to see this, but I'm pretty sure that they don't want people to see it on YouTube. Because if they did, I feel like I would be more popular. But maybe it's a good thing that I'm not. Because then less people can be mad about it. <laughs> but yeah, we'll just see what happens, I guess.